you all here this morning. I'm reading from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. It's Youth Sunday, and we are going to encourage our youth today. Amen. <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, how we thank you, God. How we thank you for your spirit. How we thank you for your presence. How we thank you, Lord, for your power that moves in and through us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that it is in you that we move and breathe and have our very being. So may you be with us, Lord God. May you make yourself present among us this morning, Lord. All those who are on their way, we pray, God, for safe traveling graces. We pray, God, for strength. We pray, God, that our pastor and his wife would get rest as they have returned, Father God, from their vacation. We pray, Lord God, that they would continue to be blessed. And we pray in the name of Jesus that every aspect of this service today would glorify your great name. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and you praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people say, amen. Somebody stand up on your feet and shout hallelujah in this place. Can we lift up God in this place this morning? Hallelujah, Jesus. How many know we serve a great God this morning? Come on, don't be ashamed to praise the Lord. Come on, if you got the activities of your lambs, let's stand up on our feet and give God a hand clap of praise. Let's open up our mouths and give him some glory in this place because he's worthy. Let's go. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, put your hands together like this. Oh. Everybody say, come on, say. He has never failed. Through all my trials, oh, boy, he's the greatest one. Take it up. Everybody say Everybody say
have to declare your wonders because we've seen you do miracles over and over again God am I the only person that's experienced a miracle in my life y'all get too quiet for me this morning y'all ought to be blessing God for his miracles for his way making abilities because you're great God he didn't have to do it he didn't have to do it so we're thankful God if nothing else we're thankful God we're grateful for what you've done oh God you're so mighty yes you are Hallelujah, God, yes. The song gets simple, it says. Oh, Lord God Almighty, you are clothed with majesty. The heavens declare your wonders, for you are great and do marvelous things for you alone our God there is no one else like you let 
let the nations declare that you have done great things. Oh, so I'll sing mighty you are, holy you are, your mercy endureth forevermore. Righteous you are, great you are, I will exalt you, O Lord, my God, my King. Everybody sing, Lord God Almighty, say, Lord God Almighty, you are clothed with majesty, That's 
why my heart is filled with praise. Can we lift that up? Oh, oh, oh I love you, so I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. Not like you need a reason, but let's say it. Because you care for me. me. Oh, it's such a special way. That's why I I lift you up. And I magnify you. second verse see my heart yes my mind my my soul he sent his son to pay the ultimate price you paid the price for me way back yes that's why I must praise you yes and I'm praising him. Let's keep praising him. Let's keep praising him. God has been good. Let's keep praising him. Let's praise him this morning. Thank you, Lord. Let's praise him this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, died for us to become a spiritual family, a spiritual family that's connected at every part. And at this time, we come together as a family to pray together. They say a family that prays together stays together. But this morning, we're going to do it a little bit differently. I want us to reach across the aisles and for us all to be connected to each other. Let's all just reach across the aisles and be connected to each other. We're going to pray as a family this morning. God has been so good. God has been so good. He's been so good. Praise the Lord. It's okay to be silent in his sight sometimes. Thank you. Lord, I thank you so much. Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you so much that you are God and God alone. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, perfect in all your ways good because it's who you are good because it's what you do good because you are the standard of it lord god we thank you for being you uncreated you are always there god you have always been with us lord god you will always be with us lord god Lord, we thank you so much that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our creator. You made us out of the abundance of your love, Lord God. And we want to thank you this morning. Lord, we thank you that you are holy. We thank you, Lord God, that you are righteous. We thank you, Lord God, that although things in this world aren't always just, you are God. 
And one day, Lord God, we will all have to answer to you, Father God, for the things that we have done in the body, whether good or bad. So in the name of Jesus, Lord, forgive us. We have fallen short of your righteous standard time and time and time and time again. And it's only by your great mercy that we're able to stand and even pray before you today. It's only your great mercy that was found in you in the person of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins that we are able to come boldly before your throne. In all of our mess, in all that we've done, we're able to come boldly before your throne because of what you did for us. So we thank you. Lord God, we want to thank you this morning for Deacon Luke and his family, God. Lord, even when our health begins to fail, you're still right there with us, God. Lord God, we want to give thanks for all of our sick and shut in this morning. In the name of Jesus, Lord, may they not be forgotten by us. May they not feel forgotten by us. And if they do, Lord God, forgive us and help us, Lord God, to be reminded of those that we need to go see, that we need to go encourage, that we need to go and show some love to, Lord God, because you haven't forgotten them. So, Lord, as your hands and your feet, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you might remind us that we may not forget them either, God. Lord, I want to pray for your people who are connected here this morning, hand in hand, arm in arm. Lord, all of us have faced different challenges this week. All of us have faced the ups and downs of this life. All of us, Lord God, have dealt with an abundance of money or maybe not so much, Lord God. Lord, we've all dealt with something this week that we've needed you for, God. And we thank you that you've been there. We thank you that you got us to this point because today wasn't promised. You never promised that we would make it here today, Lord God, but you brought us through. You got us here and you gave us an opportunity to praise you no matter what it is we've been through this week. So Lord, give us a true heart of worship and praise that we might praise you in the good and that we might praise you in the bad, Lord God. That we might praise you in all situations and circumstances. And now, Father God, I pray that you would supply the needs of your people this morning. Lord God, those who are struggling in their finances, Lord, I pray they might find a blessing in you. Those, Lord God, who are struggling with depression and doubt and lack of self-confidence, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray that they would remember that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, those who are struck by fear and panic attacks, Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you remind them that perfect love cast out all fear. And your love for us and your love in and through us is perfect, Lord God. Fear is not of you. I pray for those who are oppressed by spiritual warfare, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that your spirit would come against the spirit of this world, Lord God. And that you would remind us, Lord God, that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray for those who might be confused about which way to go. I pray in the name of Jesus you would bless them with wisdom, Lord God. You tell us, Lord, to ask if we need wisdom and that you will give it, Lord God. So I pray, Lord God, that we would find trust in our hearts for you and for your word. God, I give you thanks for bringing our pastor and first lady back safely, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that they're able to rest this day off, Lord God, after a a great vacation in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I pray you will be with them, Lord God. Encourage them this morning, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that they would know that things here are smooth and they don't have to worry, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would give our pastor a renewed sense of vision, Lord God, and his wife a renewed sense of support and give her the strength that she needs and the spiritual gifts that you have blessed her with, Father. Lord God, this morning I want to pray for the families. Our kids are going back to school, those who are in Pasadena Unified, Lord, this week. Others are going back in the weeks to come, Father God, and I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will supply them with their needs, Lord God. 
I pray that you would support those families, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that as we encourage our youth today, that they would feel the love that they have coming through this room, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we would encourage them with our words, that we would encourage them with our prayers, not just at home, but even in person, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus that the saints would begin to grab them and hug them and love them and bless them and pray over them, Father God, even today in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, there's so much craziness in this world that can get us off track and to cause our eyes not to be fixed on Jesus. So I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, you would give us a strict focus a strict focus on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. Lord God, we love you. Lord God, we love you. Have your way among us this day. May each and every aspect of this service today glorify your great name. We worship before an audience of one. All of our worship belongs to you, O oh God. We are not here for ourselves, Lord, though you allow your blessings to flow down to us, Lord God. We pray in the name of Jesus that we might bless you, Lord God, that we might worship you, Lord God, that our hearts and minds might be fixed toward you, Lord God. Help us to cast away every care, every anxiety of the world, everything that pulls us away, Lord God, and help us in these short moments to have a single-minded focus on you. Lord, thank you. We praise you in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people say, amen, 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 amen. That's why, that's why my heart is with praise. Praise God. Praise God. Good morning, saints. Welcome to the land of the living. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Kick the deadness off your shoe. Kick the dust off that. Come on to the land of the living. Praise God. Um, now I want to um, welcome our first-time visitors. Any first-time visitors in the house? Stand up, please. Stand up, please. Let us see you. Let us see you. Let us see you. All right. All right. All right. Praise God. It's a lot of y'all today. We're going to start over here. Could you please tell us what brought you here? And your name, please, while you're at it. <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. My brother lives in Santa Clarita. Amen. You, or should I start with the, the you, since you're the oldest, right? It's a lot of y'all. <laughs> right here, come on. Mm -hmm. Madagascar, amen. 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 Praise God. All the way from Madagascar. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Woo. Woo. You're with them? Okay, amen. All right, all right. Four daughters. Thank God you're blessed. Right here behind you, please. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Right here in the center. All right, amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen, amen. Last but not least. Praise God, praise God, praise God. 
Woo -wee. Well, the ushers are going to come around, bring you guys something. You probably already have it now. If you don't, they'll be there shortly. But on behalf of our pastor, uh, Lucius W. Smith, who is still vacationing, we want to welcome you and greet you with the fullness of friendship. So friendship family, could you please welcome our visitors, make them feel at home, amen? Praise God. Praise God. I hope you all feel nice and welcome now. Amen. Amen. It's good to see all of you in the house of the Lord today. Amen. It's a good day. It's a Sunday. Amen. A Sunday is a great day. It's a fun day. It's an exciting day. It's the Lord's day. All the days are his, but I'm thankful for this day because I get to see y'all and enjoy y'all all day long. Amen. That don't mean it's going to be a long service, but praise God. Praise God. We have a few um, announcements. First of all, I'm going to just call him Super. Amen. It's the best day of his life. Deacon Luke is back in the house. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. There is healing in this place. Amen. My brother went to the hospital two times in one day. Amen. <laughs> healing in this place. And now he's here today. Praise God. Praise God. That is a blessing. That is a blessing. I don't know what was wrong, but all I know is everything is right right now. Amen. 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 Um, again, for uh, Sister Angie Ellis, she's here in the house somewhere, but her mom passed again. So again, continue praying for her, praying for the support of the family, and sure love. Sure love when you see her. Amen. Uh, Sister Loretta Hudson and Becky Hudspeth. And that family, their mother is going home. Well, she went home to glory last week. Amen. But um, the service will be at First AME in Pasadena over there on Raymond Street, uh, August 14th at 11 a.m. The repast will follow directly after that. So if you're going to that service, First AM uh, up on Raymond in, I believe it's Tremont. Not Tremont, but Penn. I know it's one of them blocks. Amen. So they'll be having a service there this coming week. Amen. So again, be prayerful, 
just show your show the natural love and support that you always show. Amen. Yeah. Um, corporate fast is coming up. Amen. Woo! Corporate fast is coming up. Our fast and our prayer time is coming upon us very soon. August 19th, Monday is when it starts. And it ends Wednesday, August 21st at 7 p.m. We normally start it the Monday right after Sunday service. And we go all the way to Wednesday. We end it here with our fellowship time right here at 7 o'clock. Amen. So make sure that you're here. Make sure that you're press, uh, excuse me, make sure that you're fasting, make sure that you're praying specifically. Remember the, the, the message last week? Specific prayer, specific prayer. Tell God exactly what's going on. Don't, don't, don't gloss over it, amen, with a full paint brush. Get a detailed brush and be specific with your prayers. Praise God. Um, and we're also looking for some mighty things to happen here at Friendship. We're doing some great things, but it ain't great enough, amen? The pastor keeps telling us about greater glory, amen? The glory of this house will be greater than the former house. Amen. So make sure that we're praying specifically for the growth and maturity of this house. Amen. Um, our quarterly business meeting is coming up. This, I think it's, oh, no, the 24th. In a few Saturdays, amen, a couple of Saturdays at 10 o'clock. We want to make sure that we're here, that we're supporting, because the business of the church is the business of its people. Amen. All y'all here should be here on that Saturday, the 24th, amen, because you guys play a part in the decisions that we make in going forward in the ministry, amen, because there's a lot of things that we're looking to do. We got to make sure we have full participation to do it because ministry takes people and it takes money, but it really takes people, amen, and it takes money, but it really takes people, amen, and then it takes some more money, amen, but, but it really, really, really takes people, amen. That is the work of this ministry, amen? That is the work of most ministries, but it takes people. Uh, today, right after service, right after service, not one minute after, but more like 20 seconds after, we have backpack supplies and, and, and school supplies that we're going to be giving out um, directly after service. If you wait a few minutes, you might miss it, amen, because things go fast, amen? But we're giving away the rest of the stuff that we have. We had our party last Saturday. A lot of children showed up. We got some stuff left over because a lot of people gave. So we're giving that stuff away. So make sure you come down. There'll be some salads and pizza in case you're hungry too because I know, you know, y'all get hungry after service. So it's going to be a little snack down there for you also. But make sure you come and get you some supplies, especially if you haven't gotten them yet. Amen? Let the church bless you. Praise God. Um, one more thing. Throughout the week, I'm just going to ask this as a big favor. It's a big favor for me. Amen? Pray for your pastor at least five minutes a day. Can y'all do that? At least five minutes. Just give him five minutes. You know what I mean? 459 and three quarters. But, but give him five minutes of your prayer time. Amen. And see how much more he'll be greater for the kingdom of God. Amen. And see how much your blessing will show up because you decided to pray for your pastor. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to move forward. Now is a time for everybody to participate. It's our giving time. Amen. All right. It is our giving time. Praise God. So if you have an offering of any size, if you have your tithe, um, now is the time to give that. So we're going to do our confession of faith right now. Right now. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. So could you hold it before the Lord? Amen. And say it with me. This is the offering I bring to God, the seed of faith I sow. I give it in faith. I give it in love. I give it in obedience. I believe the promises he has made, and I shall reap the harvest that he has promised, however he chooses to bring it my way in Jesus' name. Father God, we ask that you bless this seed, Father Lord. We ask that you mature this seed, Father Lord. We ask that you make this ground as fertile as it needs to be, Father Lord, to bring forth your blessing in fullness, Father Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless those that give, Father Lord. Bless those that give uh, 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 from their heart, Father Lord. Bless those that give in service, Father Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray. Amen. You're now in the hands of your ushers. Praise God. God's got a blessing with your name on it. Yeah. 
listen. Makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test. It won't last no waste. So get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready. For your miracle. For your miracle. Say, get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your yeah. blessing. Well, let me encourage you, it's going to be all right. Troubles and trials come to make you strong. Keep on believing, you keep holding on to so get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready. For your miracle. For your miracle. So get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. Get ready, get ready for your miracle. For your miracle. Say, get ready, get ready for your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready, get ready for your miracle. For your miracle. Ooh, get ready, get ready for your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready, yeah. get ready for your miracle. For your miracle. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. This is the crowd participation part. Say, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Now, only if you believe it, say, come on. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Let's turn it up. Come on, come on. Sing, oh, oh, God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. With your name on it. God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. 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 Oh, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Yeah, come on, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Yes, He does. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Come on, come on, everybody sing. Come on, God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. With your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. what I need y'all to do. We're claiming that God's got a blessing with our name on it, right? So this is your job. You got to reach up there and pull it down. So we're pulling it down, pulling it down, pulling it. You got two hands, don't you? Come on. We're pulling it down. Come on, pull that blessing down. Come on. I said I'm pulling it down. I said I'm pulling it down. I said I'm pulling it down. See that blessing, come on. Say I'm pulling it down. My finances. I'm pulling it down. My healing. I'm pulling it down. My way maker. I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling it down. My health. I'm pulling it down. My wealth. I'm pulling it down. Provision. I'm pulling it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling it down. Say I'm pulling it down. Everybody say, God's got a blessing. 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 God's got a bless
blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Put it yourself. Say with my name on it. 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 Put your hands together in this place. Come on. Yeah. We love you, Lord. Yeah. One last time. Here we go. With my name on it. With my name on it. Come on and make some noise in this place. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. If you think about it, he has several, several blessings with your name on it. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Several blessings. Um, in just a moment, we're going to bring up a young pastor here that uh, just traveled uh, south of the United States for a little while. He's seen some things. He did some things. So I'm pretty sure he's going to be a little bit inspired, amen, from his this past week, amen. Uh, he blessed somebody. He laid hands on some folks. Uh, I'm sure he, he brought forth some healing in the name of Jesus on some folks, amen. But um, we're going to bring him up in just a minute to share what God has laid on his heart. But with our profession of faith, raise your Bible. Say with me, amen. Say with me. Believe it, know it, amen. Know it, amen. Believe it, amen. Trust it, amen. This is the word of God. Trust it. This is the sword of the spirit. Trust it, amen. Say with me, this is my Bible. This is God's word speaking to me. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. The sword of spirit. The word of God, with it I wage war against the enemy of my soul. I will fight the good fight. I will contend for the faith. I will uphold the honor of God. In Jesus' name, amen. I present to you Pastor Nick.
that comes from my mouth. And I pray, Lord God, that they wouldn't hear me, but they might hear you through me, Lord God. I am your servant, Lord God. Please, Lord God, allow me to serve your people by your name. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right, I want you guys real quick. I don't have this slide on the screen, so I need you to actually open a Bible. Uh, <laughs> and if you have a Bible app, that's also fine. If you use version and you see that little one come up, for your streaks as if this is the first day you've opened it this week, that's okay, because we're going to get you started off on a good week, all right? We're going to get you started off the right way. So we're going to go to Luke chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, and this is not where we're going to be spending our time today, but this is just something I want to open us up with as we consider what we're going to be dealing with today. Luke chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. I'll give you a few seconds to get there. <clears throat> Give me an amen if you're there. Amen. amen. <clears throat> now these verses talk about John the Baptist, but it also talks about the prophetic work of the Holy Spirit. Right. And what the Holy Spirit does as the Lord prophesies and leads his people. It says in verse 16, speaking of John the Baptist, he will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. So speaking of John the Baptist, one thing that John was going to do is he was going to inspire the people of Israel to return back to God. So one of the things that the Holy Spirit does in the work in the prophetic work of the Spirit, is that he turns people back towards God. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking specifically about a person besides the Holy Spirit. He turns people's hearts back to God. And look at the other thing he does. Verse 17. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah and turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So this is the work of the Holy Spirit in its prophetic activity. It calls people back to the Lord and it also calls people back to the very first institution that God created. The very first institution that God created is the family. So the stronger we become in the Lord, the stronger our families should become. Does that make sense? So if you're spiritually mature, that should mean there's a certain strength of the Lord in your family your family life becomes stronger as you become stronger in the Lord. So today what we're going to talk about is wisdom. We're going to talk about wisdom. It's Youth Sunday, and our youth are getting ready to go back to school. A lot of them that go to Pasadena Unified School District, they're going to start school tomorrow. And I was in my study, I was completely somewhere else until Pastor Kevin reminded me which is why Proverbs says that there is wisdom in a multitude of counselors. He reminded me that this Sunday was Youth Sunday, and they were starting school again on Monday. So I had to completely switch gears from where I was going to where the Spirit was truly leading. And as the youth pastor, Pastor Kevin, is, he reminded me that we needed to encourage our youth, and the Lord reminded me that we needed to strengthen our parents. So we're going to talk about parenting. We're going to talk to our youth specifically and encourage them and bless them. And we're going to do that out of Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Now one question that I have before we get into our text is just kind of ask yourself and consider or think about 
what heart motivation do you actually parent from? What heart motivation do you actually parent from? See, the Lord, he was getting at me this week looking at that and the heart motivation that I parent from. I found wasn't the heart motivation that God is calling me to parent from. And many of us will be able to relate with the reality that we have either been parented in or are parenting out of fear. We are parenting in or have been parented out of fear. The heart motivation of a lot of our parents, the heart motivation of a lot of our parenting is fear. And a modern day Pulitzer Prize winning poet wrote an extremely profound song about this dynamic. It's a song where he is communicating three terrifying moments in his life, one from age seven, another from age 17, and another from age 27. It's an extremely profound song. But at age seven, his greatest fear, according to this Pulitzer Prize winning poet, was his mother. And the fact that if he got his new shoes dirty, he was going to get a whipping. Or the fact that if she heard something bad at school about him, he was going to get a whipping. Or the fact that pretty much anything he did outside of whatever she might have wanted him to do that she didn't even necessarily communicate, he was going to get a whipping. See, that parenting motivation, the last line he says in this particular verse is, Speaking as his mom, you're going to fear me if you don't fear no one else. So what she used to motivate and inspire her child to do the right thing was fear. Does anybody know that poet that I'm talking about? Few of us? None of us? That Pulitzer Prize winning poet is actually Kendrick Lamar. And it's written, yes, he won a Pulitzer Prize for his last album. The song is called Fear. I'm not necessarily recommending that you go and listen to it. It is a tad bit vulgar, but it is a profound song. And the album actually won a Pulitzer Prize. It's the first hip hop album in the history of Pulitzer Prizes that ever won one. So it's an amazingly brilliant album. However, his mom's motivation was fear. And many of us parent out of that place. We're afraid of the realities of this world, what we know will happen to our children if they don't listen. And so we use fear as the primary motivation for inspiring our kids to do what's right. The question now is, is that the motivation that the Bible teaches us to parent from? Is that the primary way God desires us to be motivated to do what's right? Now, don't get me wrong. It is a motivation. The fear of the Lord is a real thing. And there should be a healthy fear that your child has of their parents regarding doing things that are outside of God's will or your parents' will. That's a real thing, so it's not all bad. But when it's the primary motivation, we have to assess and say, is this the primary motivation that God has called me to parent from? So that's one thing we're going to learn from this text. So we're in Proverbs chapter 4. And one more thing before we get into it, Proverbs is a book about wisdom. It's actually like one of my favorite books of the Bible. I love the book of Proverbs because it teaches you practical wisdom. But we need to know what wisdom is. So what is wisdom? So I want to give us a little understanding of what wisdom is before we get into what the proverb actually says. 
So wisdom, first and foremost, is a gift from God. That's what wisdom is. It's a gift from God. Wisdom is a way of viewing and approaching life that leads to beneficial and productive choices. So wisdom is primarily about action, not knowledge. Wisdom isn't about knowing things. It's about knowing how to do things the right way. Wisdom, this, is, this was extremely profound as I saw it. Wisdom sees God as creator as opposed to redeemer. So in Proverbs, you don't hear much about God's salvation. You hear about how God created things. So wisdom is this creative aspect of who God is. It speaks to his creative nature. And when we see wisdom in the Bible, if we take a look at Exodus chapter 31, verses 2 and 5, we see wisdom in a very creative light. It reads in Exodus 31, 2 through 5. I do have that slide. All right. Exodus chapter 31. You guys should have your Bibles open. Exodus 31, verses 2 through 5. And it reads, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills. So now this man was filled with the Spirit of God, and then he was filled, that Spirit of God filling led to him being very, very skilled. Him having knowledge in how to do something that God wanted him to do. Verse 4. He was skilled to make artistic designs for works in gold, silver, and bronze. To cut and set stones. To work in wood. And to engage in all kinds of crafts. Now what he was helping to create was the ark. I mean not the ark of the covenant. Was God's tabernacle. He was helping to create God's tabernacle. So creating and creation is a way that we connect to God. Because wisdom sees God as creator, not just redeemer. And when we first meet God in the book of Genesis, we don't meet God as redeemer. We meet God as creator. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So I want to encourage our youth, our adults, everybody. When you are pressing into the creative parts of your being, you are pressing closer and closer to who God is as creator. So for all my creatives, and I'm not saying you have to be a super creative person to be godly. I'm not saying that. But I want to encourage my creatives that your art can be and should be a clear representation of the beauty and creativity of God. Amen. And for our young people who desire to do things in creative arts, that work can be directly connected to the beauty and creativity of God himself. So don't discourage that work, parents, out of fear that they won't get paid for it. That may very well be the thing and the will that God has for them to do as it was for Bezalel. That was God's will for the tabernacle to be created. And he needed creative people around to be able to do that. Therefore, he raised up creative people, filled them with the spirit of wisdom and creativity, and appointed them to go and do the work. So as parents, what we have to do is pray. When you hear your child talking about something they might be interested in, before you shoot it down, pray and try to consider whether or not the Lord has put that thing on their heart. So now we're stepping into Proverbs chapter 4. And this sermon is entitled, The Three OGs of Wisdom. The Three OGs of Wisdom. And the first is to get 
Wisdom. Amen. Get wisdom. That's the first, the three OGs of wisdom. Get wisdom. The very first word, I'm reading from the NIV, the very first word in Proverbs 4 is listen. I know. <laughs> I felt the same way y'all feeling right now. Listen. This isn't just for the youth. This is also for the parent. Listen. Listen, the book of James is also considered wisdom literature. It's in the New Testament, not the Old Testament. And in the book of James, it tells us to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and even slower to anger. So one of the primary attributes of being a wise person and wisdom is to listen. Very first thing he says Listen, you want to be a wise person? Stop talking. And don't just stop talking, but start listening. Stop talking, start listening. Wisdom comes from that place of listening. Then he says, listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning. So do not forsake my teaching, for I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. This is Solomon talking to his sons. This can also be applied to our daughters. I don't have sons. I have my son few, Desmond, that's my son nephew. <laughs> but I have two daughters. And this can also be applied to our daughters. It's not just applied to sons. But he calls them to listen to a father's instruction. See, there's something very, very important about a father instructing his children. There's something extremely profound about the father actually being the one who is the primary teacher Amen. in the home. That makes a big difference in the life of a child. You see, fathers, we can't become passive because typically our wives or the mothers are the more nurturing or the more prevalent in regards to communications with the children. We can't become passive in our call by God to instruct our children. It's very, very important. Has anybody ever seen the movie Creed, the first one? Love that movie. I love that movie. In the opening scene, we see Michael B. Jordan's child character has just gotten into a fight. And the reason why he got into a fight was because Someone said something about his mother, and he beat him up. That's pretty much what he said. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 6, it tells us something very, very profound about this dynamic. This dynamic of parents, mothers, fathers, and children, and children's anger in the lack thereof. Proverbs 17, 6 says, grandchildren are crowned to the age, and parents are the pride of their children. This is talking about a created and established order by God, that parents are the very thing that their children are to be proud of. Therefore, when they're not there, they are ashamed. Therefore, when someone says something to them, they will react. When a father is absent from the home, a sense of shame will cover the child. When a mother is absent from the home or absent in the instruction, they can even be there but still be absent. There's a sense of shame that covers that child. And that sense of shame will lead to that child acting out in ways that are not wise or beneficial. 
Because the pride of a child is their parents. So now when you start to consider how divorce or children outside of a marital relationship begin to affect a child, you have to understand there's a sense of shame that's going to be embedded in the person of that child that can only be rooted out by God. Because parents are the pride of their children. They are the thing, parents are the thing that children admire most, even though they don't act like it all the time. They look at you as their hero. They are the very, this is the very first voice they've heard. This is the very first embrace they felt. It's the very first nurturing that they received. It came from their parents. So when the parenting relationship begins to break down, when things happen in the child's life like molestation or, or divorce or parents that leave and abandon their children, the children have deep-seated hurt at a God level. Not at a human level. This is at a God level because this is established order by God. This is the way things are. This proverb is talking about how it is. Grandchildren, grandparents are proud of their grandchildren. It's natural. You don't even have to try to do it. It wells up in you. Right? And Children are proud of their parents unless they can't be. And that leaves a scar. It can be healed, but you have to acknowledge and recognize that it's there. You can't just parent the same way that maybe your parents did a generation ago who were both in the house. You're going to have to do some different things. You're going to have to lean on God a little bit harder. You're going to have to get into some books. You're going to have to study and apply some things that maybe you didn't need, but your child needs. So now he says, listen, my sons or daughters, to a father's instructions. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning. Do not forsake my teaching. And then he reminisces in verse 3. He starts to reminisce. For I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me and said to me. So now we're starting to see wisdom is a generational blessing. Wisdom is something that's to be passed down from generation to generation. So now we have a father, Solomon, who was taught wisdom by his father, David, who was taught wisdom by his father, Jesse, and so on and so on and so on. So they had a lineage of wisdom running throughout their family because the fathers and the mothers Played their position. Yes, yes. Get wisdom. How do you get wisdom? It's not from me. Amen. It's not from the teachers. Amen. It's in the home. Right. The primary and most important teacher in any child's life is their parent. Yeah. You guys have to understand this. This is something you have to embrace. You are the most important teacher in your child's life. I don't care how many profound teachers they've sat under. I don't care how much they've done. When my father calls me and says, Nick, I need you to take a look at this, I'm going to stop and take a look at it. My favorite professor in seminary can call me. I may, I may not. My favorite professor in school can call me. I may or may not. My favorite teacher in high school can call me. My favorite coach could call me. I may, I may not. But if my father calls me, if my mother calls me, see, it captures my heart in a different way. 
I'm compelled to listen because that's my mother, because that's my father. And you need to recognize that that's who you are in your child's life. Now, if you are in a situation where you feel or you know that your child can't be proud of you, repent. Go to that child. Apologize. God is in the restoration business. But the first thing we have to do is acknowledge our shortcomings, acknowledge our failings. You may even be in a two-parent home, but you may be thinking about, or maybe the Lord is placing on your heart, ways in which your parenting has fallen short of his standard. And the same thing has to take place. We have to apologize. You want your child to be a forgiving child? Ask them for forgiveness. That's where they learn it. You want to see a child go out into the world and be unforgiving? Sit in your pride and act as if everything you do is right because you say it or you do it. See, when we try to sit in the place of God and do the things that God does, like say, it's right because I said it, that's going to have negative consequences because we're human, we're mortal. We will fail. God doesn't. We're not God. We got to take a seat. So he says in verse 3, For I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me and said to me, Take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. You see, his father didn't want to mold his mind. He didn't want to mold his behavior. He wanted to mold his heart. He wanted to mold his character. He wanted to mold who he was or who she was as a man or as a woman. It's too late when that 17-year-old comes in a beat-up car to take your daughter out to McDonald's. We've missed some stuff by that point. It's not over, but you got to acknowledge it. We missed some stuff at that point. See, it's a, little, it's a little late when that young man begins to go out and chase girls as if he doesn't have sense. But at the very least, we can acknowledge that maybe I was parenting from the wrong heart motivation. It's not too late for me to turn. There's still hope for me as a parent. There's still hope for me and my child to be who God wants them to be. So now what is this instruction that Solomon gives to his sons, that David gave to Solomon? Verse 5, it says, get wisdom. Straight up. Simply put, get wisdom. How we're going to define and look at wisdom is, wisdom is knowing the right thing to do and doing it the right way. Doing the right thing the right way. Because there's a wrong way to do a right thing. You know that, right? There's a wrong way to do the right thing. I think most of us would agree telling the truth is always the right thing to do. But trust me, there's a wrong way to do it. When your wife, sister, daughter, homegirl, ask you this question. Does this dress make me look fat? Now, hold on. There's a truth that may need to be relayed here, right? However, the way you communicate that truth may dictate how well the rest of your human goes. So when we answer that question and say, I think that dress looks beautiful on you. 
That is the truth, if that's how you feel. That's the truth. Wisdom is being able to answer the question within the question and leave the other questions alone. <laughs> that's what wisdom is. So now he says, get wisdom. <laughs> Come on now. Verse 5, he says, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it cost you all you have, get understanding. Cherish her. She will exalt you. Embrace her. She will honor you. She will give you a garland to grace your head and present you with a glorious crown. What he is telling his children is that even if it cost you all your friends, even if it cost you all your money, even if it cost you your job, get wisdom. No matter what it cost, get wisdom. Get the real thing. Get this gift that God offers freely to those who love him. Get wisdom. Even if it costs you everything, get it, because wisdom will bless your life. Yeah. Wisdom will bless your life. So don't forget it. Don't forsake it. Embrace it, because wisdom is a blessing. So the first of our three OGs of wisdom is simply to get wisdom. Get wisdom. Secondly is get out the way. Get wisdom. Get out the way. Something that we say today that also correlates with this reality, stay in your lane, staying out the way, this is the same idea here. So Solomon is going to go over some temptations that might entice his children to turn away from wisdom. And practically what he's going to say is, get out of the way of those. Get out the way. So now in verse 10, he starts again. Listen. Every section in this, in this uh, proverb starts with a call to pay attention or to listen. Listening is the first and primary aspect of what wisdom is. He says, listen, my son, accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. So now what he's appealing, he's appealing to his son's heart to trust him. He wants his son to trust that he's always going to lead him in the way of righteousness. See, some of us as parents have maybe broken down trust in our parental relationship. And that can only be restored through repentance, apologizing to that child, and then communication, and also being a man or woman of your word. And now none of us are perfect, so everything's not going to go always the way that we would like it to, but you know what? Picking up the phone and saying, hey, I'm not going to be able to make it today, as opposed to just not showing up, goes a very long way. That goes a very long way. Because when we begin to see our children go in different directions that we don't want them to go, and now we're calling them to listen to us, they're no longer going to listen because they don't trust you. Trust has to be established in the parenting and child relationship, or else our children don't listen. So now he says in verse 12, when you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Verse 14, here's what he really wants to say. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way 
of evildoers. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way, for they cannot rest until they do evil. They are robbed of sleep till they make someone stumble, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter to the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They, make, they do not know what makes them stumble. So now what Solomon is teaching his son is to get out the way. You see, the sad thing is, and the reality is, some of our young men and women that will be going to school tomorrow as early as the third and fourth grade will start to be involved in gang activity. Some of our children want and desire to be the class clown. Some of our children, though they may be well-intentioned, will lack direction and seek others to follow along that path. And the reality is, young men, young women, the reality is you got to get out the way. You got to get out the way. You're not going to be able to go the same direction that all of your friends are choosing to go. And it's not going to be easy. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it's going to be easy. You're going to have to make some difficult choices as a young man, as a young woman. If you truly desire to walk in wisdom and to have the blessings that come with wisdom and to walk with the Lord, you're going to have to make some difficult decisions to separate yourself from people who desire to go a direction that you know isn't wise. And you're going to have to pray. Your faith is going to have to become your own. It can't just be mom and daddy's anymore. Because you're going to face some real challenges. You're going to face some serious challenges out in the world, at school, every day. You're going to make mistakes. You are. It's going to happen. But when you make that mistake, get back up. Get back on the path of wisdom. Get back... on the path of righteousness. Just because you fail doesn't mean you can't get up. Just because you fail doesn't mean you can't get up. You can. Stand firm. Believe it. Things get, in my personal opinion, things get a whole lot easier once school is over. I think so. I think it's a lot less peer pressure. I think it's a lot less challenge. I can go and do whatever job I'm doing and not really have to worry about what everybody else is thinking about it because I'm taking care of me and mine. But I feel like when you're in, when you're in school, there's a lot of pressure to conform to the standard that's there. And the standard of the schools of the world, I don't care if it's a private school, I don't care if it's a public school. The standard of the schools of the world are not God's standard. Now, there are some solid Christian schools that definitely try to encourage us to stay on God's path. But I work at one of those schools, and I've seen those kids come and eat edibles at seventh grade. It happens. This is reality. So what you guys have to do is commit to staying out the way. Get out the way. Get out the way. Now, the third OG of wisdom, the first, get wisdom. The second, get out the way. The third, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Verse 20, my son, my sons, my daughters, everybody here, pay attention to what I say. Listen, listen pay attention. Listen, listen, pay attention. It's so important to give your attention to the words of the wise. Pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. 
for they are life to those who find them and health to one to one's whole body verse 23 above all else the most important aspect of wisdom is what he's going to communicate to us right now above all else Guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. And when he's talking about the heart, he's not talking about the physical organ that we have in our chest. He's talking about that place where we actually believe and do the things that we do. The heart is where we believe what we believe and where we do what we do. You see, you might look at a scripture and say, all right, I believe that I should guard my heart. I believe that. I should guard my heart. But then you might go out into the world and take advice from people who don't love the Lord. Or, like I did, just being realistic, take these, you know, these rap songs. Practically, what I was doing through my whole college career was trying to live a JT video. Like, I took that into my heart and believed it as truth and thought that that's what life was really about. And so we take these things into our heart through media. We take these things into our heart through our friends. We take these things into our heart, even from our parents. It's, if your parent says something that doesn't line up with scripture, I'm not saying be disrespectful, but guess what? You might have to guard your heart from it. You might have to guard your heart from it. That's reality. Guarding your heart means protecting your heart from anything that goes against God's will or God's word. You'll go to school, and they'll say, you can be anything you want to be. If you're a girl, you can be a boy. Come on, let's, let's, press, let's press that statement to its logical end. You can be anything you want to be. No, you can't. You can be what God created you to be. And they sound, these things, they sound good. They sound encouraging. But if you really press these things out to their logical end, you see they lead to destruction. They lead to destruction. I'm not seeking to be anything that I can be. I'm seeking to be all God called me to be. That's very different. That's very different. If God knitted me together, if God knitted you together while, he was in, while you were in the womb and already created a path for you, it's your job to seek it, not your job to create it. So the reality is we have to guard our hearts. Parents, you have to set your children up to guard their hearts. You got to get in this word. So I was being a little funny when I had us open up the Bible in the beginning, but I was, I was being serious. We got to be in this thing because if we don't know it, then we can't protect our children. And our, our children belong to God. You have to understand your children, according to the book of Malachi, were given to you so that you might raise godly offspring. That's the purpose that God gave you children so that you might raise godly offspring. He didn't ask you to raise the next president. He didn't ask you to raise the next doctor, lawyer, engineer, basketball player, football player. He didn't ask you to raise them. He asked you to raise a godly child. Now, that godly child might go on and become the president. That godly child might go on and become the best NBA player who's ever played or whatever. But keep the main thing the main thing, parents. We spend so much time encouraging our kids in sports, encouraging our kids in theatrical things, and encouraging our kids in being a good student. And I'm not saying that those things are bad, but they're bad when they're out of place. You have to encourage your kids in the Lord. And then together, Seek out what the Lord has called your child to become together. Fathers, 
you guys need to be the one calling out the gifts that you see in your children. Encouraging them and giving them confidence and strength in the things they do well. Mothers, you are the ones to be nurturing those gifts within the home. Not only should you be praying about your spiritual gifts, you should be praying about the ones that God has given your children. And as you come to knowledge of those spiritual gifts, you should encourage those. You should put them in places where they can grow those gifts, where those skills can be developed and they can become everything that God has called them to be. That's parenting from God's perspective. It starts with God and flows through the parent to the child so that we might create a legacy of wisdom. You see, wisdom is a spiritual generational blessing that can be passed down from parent to child and to child to child and from grandparent to grandchild and grandparent to child. It can be passed down. But it happens in the home. So now he tells them, above all else, guard your heart. And children, they need, children need help to guard their heart. That's what Solomon's doing right here. Did you catch that? What Solomon is doing and communicating and sitting his children down and communicating to them is helping them to guard their hearts. He's even telling them that it's something that's necessary. We have to communicate to our children that they need to protect their hearts. Verse 24, keep your mouth free of perversity, parents and children. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Now, he just communicated that the heart is the place from which everything flows. So if you're cursing or using corrupt speech in any way, it doesn't just have to be cursing, that's a heart problem. You don't need to try to stop cursing. You need God to fix your heart. That's very different. And it's available for you. You don't need to try to stop cursing. You need God to fix what's in your heart that's leading you to do that. Verse 25. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. If we're out here addicted to social media... That's a heart problem. That's a heart problem. See, that's us needing to say, God, I need you to help me fix my eyes directly before me, not looking at what everybody else has and becoming envious. That's a heart thing. He says in verse 26, give careful thought to the paths of your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Think about where you are actually going, not where you want to go. Amen. Think about where you're actually going, not where you want to go. As a business owner, I have some goals. There's some things that I desire to accomplish. But in the last month or so, I've realized, yeah, that's where I want to go, but that's not where I'm going. I'm not going in the direction of my goals. Therefore, I need to change, not my goals. It's not my goals that need to change. I need to make some changes in order to be consistent with where I believe the Lord is leading me and my family. So he's saying, give careful thought to the paths of your feet. Pray about where you're going. Ask the Lord to show you where you're actually going versus the direction he wants you to go. He'll help you to see that. Then he says in verse 27, do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. See, evil and evil things are a deterrent to guarding our hearts. And if we're going to guard our hearts, then we have to steer clear of things that are not like the Lord. And that means as parents, we have to steer our children in paths of righteousness. That might change what you watch at home. That might change what you listen to 
in your car. That might change how you talk to your friends on the phone. That might change things in your life if you're truly going to commit to walking in wisdom and allowing it to become a generational blessing in your family. At this time, I would like to call any parents and all of our youth that desire prayer. I want to get down there with y'all, so somebody <laughs> go ahead to pray for me too. But the reality is, if you've been a parent, you've had a problem. If you've been a child, you've had a problem. And all of us need prayer. I want you guys to understand something. I'm not, when I'm reading this text, I'm not reading it from a place of, this is what I do. I'm reading it from a place of, God just told me what to do and I need to straighten up. So I'm not seeking to be self-righteous or proud in my communication, but I will not lower the standard of God's word because of my shortcomings. My shortcomings won't cause me to cut God's word short. But I can repent. I can turn. I can pray. God can bless me in the same way that he can bless you. So I'm calling for all of our youth at this time. We definitely want to pray over all of you guys this morning who are headed to school either tomorrow or in the weeks to come. And I also want to call any parents that are looking for prayer. Our youth can come right up front and parents if we can just surround them it doesn't even have to be your child we want our youth right up front right here at the altar Make a way for all of our youth to get to the front. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come here this morning as parents, as children, acknowledging the reality that we have fallen short, God. Lord, your standard for parenting and for being a child is far beyond what we can reach, God, in our own strength. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, by the power of your spirit, Lord, we can turn. We can become all you desire us to be as a parent. We can become all you desire us to be as a child. Lord Jesus, you died on the cross for our ability to live unto God in all things. And Lord, as we have been convicted and challenged by the reality of your word, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that it would not push us 
to shame or guilt, but that it would push us to freedom. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Set us free from our failures, God. Set us free, Lord God, of our fear. Lord, allow us to parent from a place of love, God. True love. Your word says that love is patient. Love is kind. It is not boastful. It does not envy. Love loves truth. And in the name of Jesus, Lord God, as we have been confronted with truth today, I pray in the name of Jesus, our hearts might embrace it. That we would not reject truth, that we would not forsake wisdom, that we would not turn away from it, that we would keep our feet walking along the path of wisdom and righteousness, God. Help us, Lord. We come before you at this altar today recognizing that we need your help. We need your strength. We need your ability, Lord God. And Lord, I want to pray for those who maybe desired to come but felt like they couldn't. Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch them. Touch them where they are, God. Help them to know that you are here for them, that we are together in this thing called life. And all these challenges that we face, there is no temptation that has caught us that is not common to man. These are all common things that we all face day in and day out. Help us not to sit in our pride, Lord God, and miss the opportunity for blessing in the name of Jesus, Lord. For all of our youth, Lord, I pray that they would know that they are loved. I pray, God, that you would cover and bless them, Lord God. Cover them in the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, there is no shortage of craziness that they face on a day in and day out basis at their schools, Lord. But I pray, God, that you would guard their hearts. I pray, God, that you would protect their minds. I pray, God, that you would begin to show them the gifts that you've placed in them, Lord God, and that you would encourage those gifts. You would build up those gifts. You would give them even more gifts, Father God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that they would recognize that they are smart, Lord God that they can learn the things that the teachers are seeking to teach them, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would give them a spirit of wisdom, Father God, that they would be able to accomplish great things in your name, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that even if they're not the best student, that they would not be discouraged by standardized testing, Lord God, but that they would recognize where their strengths lie, Lord God, and that they would find outlets to be able to encourage those strengths. Father God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you, Lord God, for my children. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and I thank you for all of the children that you've given us here. Help our village to be stronger, God. Help our village to be stronger. Help us, Lord God, to see those young men whose fathers may have stepped away from their responsibilities at this time, Lord God, and help us to take young men and young women under our wings and encourage them and bless them and help them, Lord God, along this road of life. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that for all of our single parents, Lord God, whether they be a mother or a father, Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus for those who may have been divorced before in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would help them to know that their situation is not insurmountable, but that all things are possible through Christ who gives us strength. I pray, God, that hope would fill their hearts so that they might know, Lord God, that you are with them. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for anybody who may not know you in the pardon of their sins. I pray, God, that they might come and seek you, Father God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that any parents that recognize, Lord God, that they may not know you and they've heard your standard and they recognize what they've called you to and they say, what must I do to be saved? I pray, God, that you would have your way. Thank you so much for all you've done today, Lord God. Grant us grace and peace. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. You guys can be seated.
been a good day, Saints? Yeah. We would be remiss not to offer the way of salvation to anybody who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. The Lord calls to us that have ears. And if you have ears this morning, I pray that you hear. Salvation is available only in the name of Jesus Christ. It was only him that came and lived a sinless life. It was only him that died a sinner's death. It was only him that was risen from the grave and now is seated at the right hand of God forevermore interceding on your behalf. So if any of you are here today that don't know the Lord, you can come forward now, you can come and talk to me afterwards. But I pray that you leave here knowing that your eternity is secured in the hands of Jesus Christ. Amen? Well, saints, we're going to go. Let's stand. And we're going to let Bryson close us out on this song. Go ahead, brother. Speak to my, speak to my heart. Oh, give me your, give me your holy word. If I keep it, then I know what to do. Remember, downstairs, we are having a get-together for all of our parents and kids. We have backpacks and things and school supplies, but you are dismissed. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you downstairs.